Is joining us now with his view on the markets, Mohamed El Arian, Allianz, uh, chief economic advisor. Since we've seen uh, Mohammed, the you know the the specter of a possible much greater retaliation than what we got, it, it's not really based right now on fundamentals. I, I can't ask you for a short-term outlook on the stock market. I don't think until unless we know exactly what's going to happen geopolitically, which we don't. But can you speak to that and the overall environment we're in right now? So, Joe, good morning, and thanks for having me. You heard me on Friday on your show saying that the most likely outcome is that the market will fade the risk-off reaction to the intensification of Iran-U.S. conflict. It works very well for markets to do so. We've been conditioned to do so. And we are going to remain constructive in the short term. It is very difficult to derail this market in the short term. So if you have a tactical mindset, this is a wonderful market, and do it through the sort of exposure you heard Mike talk about, because that's what passive investors favor. They favor higher cap companies. But over the longer term, the list of uncertainties are building. <coughs> so long-term investors, the secular structural positioning is becoming harder, while the short-term positioning is, is remaining relatively straightforward. And that's the challenge for the investors. The, uh, if we go out a little bit longer, Mohammed, and, and I mean, with that in mind, there's going to be these, what we're seeing, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, they're, they're forays in, into geopolitical problems, but, but unless it's a great big event or a black swan, what does the year hold for stocks and bonds now that we're, what is it, is it January 9th uh, today? What does is, what is the year hold in your view uh, overall? So we're unlikely to repeat a 30% equity gain, a 12% bond market gain. You know, forget about correlations. Both went up for the simple reason that the two very big common global factors, and remember that phrase, common global factors, which was massive liquidity and a significant easing of trade tension. Those are unlikely to repeat. So for us to have a good year, we need a new global factor. And that global factor can only be a sustained pickup in global growth. So look for policy changes. If they materialize, especially in Europe and China, then we can have a good year for risk assets. But if they don't, the headwinds are going to start becoming more significant as we go deeper into the year. Do you think that there's something that, that everyone missed about um, technology and its effects on, on inflation that puts us in a, what word could I use? Uh, words, uh, puts us in a new normal? Yeah. It, look, technology is what keeps the Fed comfortable about being low for long. Um, look at Rich Clarida, the vice chair's speech today. He said international headwinds have eased. But despite that, we're not going to take back the insurance cuts. Why? Because there's no inflation. It's about basically Amazon, Google, and Uber. Amazon, you disintermediate higher cost suppliers. Google provides us with enormous tools to price shop. And then Uber brings on assets that already exist. These are generalized way beyond these companies. So the secular disinflation forces will continue to offset the cyclical inflation forces. And that will keep the Fed in a good place for the markets. But aren't we going up will be the next move whenever it happens, Mohammed? don't Fed. you think? Huh? Uh, I've not been not saying Fed, to you right? over and over the again for the yeah. last... What? I've been saying to you over and over again, do not fade the rally. Do not fade the U.S. The short-term momentum is strong, but do it with a view no. to the longer term. Interest rates, so the next move for the Fed will be up. Yeah, but not for a long okay. while. Not but for not a long down. while. I can't imagine. Down? That up, eventually. Look, I hope not down because we're starting to right. get evidence from Europe that ultra-low rates take away economic dynamism, undermine the financial sector, and <clears throat> contribute to global financial stability. So we don't okay. want too low interest rates. No. We'd like interest rates to remain where they are and the handoff to happen to other policies. New normal. You heard that before. You like that? I came up with that on the fly. Just uh, that's a someone cool phrase. I never someone heard that hacked phrase. your Someone must have hacked your Twitter account again. No, they did. And you know who? I'm, I'm checking right now. Uh, the uh, CNBC is looking into it. No, I'm kidding.
see you later. Thank you. Thank That's you. That's a reference to uh, well. I know. Yeah.